Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about job vocabulary or work vocabulary that you can use to describe your situation at work. So what I want you to do first is to grab a notebook. You're going to want to write this vocabulary down and I always recommend making a page per topic. So don't record your vocabulary in an A to Z list. Make sure for each topic you have a page and you keep all of the vocabulary together under that same heading. So today, work and job vocabulary. The first phrase I want to revise with you is something that seems really simple, but I hear so many mistakes with it. And this is just literally giving your job title. So for example, I'm a teacher. Really simple, hey? I hear so many mistakes, so many people trying to just explain this and getting into all sorts of troubles. So just really simple, I'm a teacher. I'm a doctor. I'm a taxi driver. Okay, just I'm, article, job title. All right, but what is really important to know is if your job title begins with a vowel sound, then you need to work a little bit more on the pronunciation. Obviously, the article before the job title will change from a to an, and then it all links together beautifully. So listen to this. If, for example, your job is accountant, you would say, I'm an accountant. Can you hear how lovely that sounds? I'm an accountant. All right, that happens all the time in English. If a word ends with a consonant sound and the next word begins with a vowel sound, it's going to link together. I'm an accountant. All right, do you want to try that one after me? I'm an accountant. Great. I'm an architect. Architect has a k sound in the middle. Uh, it's a little bit different to the spelling, so I'm an architect. Great. Um, I'm an estate agent. That's a person who sells houses. I'm an estate agent. Okay, so if your job begins with a vowel sound, then you need to bear that in mind that you're going to link together because you've got this an. I'm an accountant. I'm an architect. I'm an estate agent. I'm an engineer. Okay, if you don't want to actually give your job title, you can keep it simple and say, I work in a, I work in a bank, I work in a shop, I work in a supermarket. Okay, so you just need in a, work in a. All right, and it's lovely if you can, if you can work on this pronunciation, you can really get the fluency. I work in a shop. I work in a supermarket, all right? So keep practicing that linking. Um, maybe your company is really famous, and so you change the inner to for. I work for IBM, for example. I work for Google. I work for Microsoft. Okay, so if your company is really famous, you might want to use that expression, I work for. What about if you don't work for a company, but it's your company? Well, there are three nice ways you can say that. I work for myself. I'm self-employed. Make sure you've got that ED on the end. I'm self-employed. Or I've got my own company. I've got my own company or business maybe. Okay? So all nice ways to just say that it's your company, it's your business. I work for myself, I'm self-employed, I've got my own company. Now, what about if you don't have a job? Perhaps you've just finished university and you haven't found a job yet. You could say, I'm looking for a job. You could simply say, I'm unemployed. Try that pronunciation after me, unemployed. And then it links together because of the consonant vowel, I'm unemployed. Great, a little bit faster, I'm unemployed. 
And then another expression that we use, uh, which is the same meaning, but just sounds a bit nicer, is I'm between jobs. I'm between jobs. So that means you left one job, you haven't found another job yet, so you're between jobs, okay? And it's just basically a nice sort of friendly, polite way to say that you're unemployed. Um, now, in England, if you are unemployed, what you can do is you can claim some money from the government each week. Um, and if you do that, then we have an expression to describe that. It is, I'm on the dole. Okay, I'm on the dole. That's actually quite interesting. So you might want to Google that afterwards. What does on the dole exactly mean? But it's basically that you have some sort of allowance because you're not working at the moment. Right, what about if you did have a job and then you lost your job um, for various reasons? Well, it could be that you did something bad. Um, and in that case, you could say, I was fired or I was sacked. All right, so that means that you did something bad in your job and your manager said, get out of this building, okay? Um, so it's obviously not a good thing and the words you can use are fired, or sacked. I was fired, I was sacked. So we've got the verb to be in there because it's passive, it happened to you. If you want to make it sound a little bit more natural, you can use instead of was, got. I got fired, I got sacked. Okay, so a bit more formal, I was fired, I was sacked. And slightly less formal, I got fired, I got sacked. Okay, now, perhaps you didn't do anything wrong, but unfortunately the company has lost a lot of money and they needed to reduce the number of staff. So in that case, you might get made redundant. So that is simply when your manager says to you, I'm really sorry, we don't have enough money in the company to keep you on in this position. We're going to have to let you go, they call it. So then you can say, I was made redundant. Okay, quite a long sentence there, quite tricky. I was made redundant. Okay, or perhaps it happened to somebody you know. My husband was made redundant. My brother was made redundant. And again, if you want to make that slightly less formal, you can change that was forgot. I got made redundant. My husband got made redundant. Okay. So that's another one to say that you've lost your job, but it wasn't your fault. All right. Uh, and finally, maybe you just are of an age where you don't want to work anymore. Perhaps you're 65 or 67. Um, so then you would say to people, I'm retired. I'm retired. Or perhaps it hasn't happened yet. I'm going to retire at the end of this year. Okay, so lots of vocabulary there, lots of ways you can talk about your current job situation. If you would like a little recap or you want to see this all written down, um, I will link a blog post below this video that you can have a look at and it's got all of those phrases written down to help you copy it into your notebook. And obviously you can go back, rewind this video, practice the pronunciation, okay? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up so that I know to make more vocabulary videos and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. And I will see you in the next lesson.